Tinney from Mini Bowl Design and today I'm up in the studio. It's in the 30s outside today and overcast and it's Sunday. So I decided to take the day off. I'm pretty well caught up. And I thought for this one video, because I say just this one because uh, this is something that very low percentage of my audience is interested in. And it's uh, electronics. But I gave out quite a few of these boards and a very few people are having a problem figuring out how to put them together. So I thought I would dedicate this video uh, to just showing you how to put this together. And I'm going to start by showing you how to wind the toroid. So let me move the camera in and uh, give you the skimmy on that. Okay, first off, uh, people were wondering what number toroid to use. Have you wound on uh, these two different diameters and basically everything in between and they all work fine so there is no perfect number uh, and I don't think you'll find anywhere on the internet where it uh, talks about it uh, it's basically any toroid I know there's a lot of different values it doesn't seem to make any difference okay now to make this dumb simple uh, I would recommend that you wrap with two different colored wires this is tw uh, 26 gauge and you know, even the gauge is not critical you can go three gauges in either direction and it'll still be fine just something that wraps comfortable it's you know not hair thin but got a little bit of beef to it not critical I know but anyway and if you do use two different colors it will be much simpler for you okay if you've got two colors take enough wire to put 15 wraps on this Twist these two ends together, uh, two different colors. I'm using red and white, so I'm going to, okay, twist the red and the white together. Okay, take your two wires, at the same time wrap both of them in the same direction, right around, around. Put about 13 to 15 wraps on. When you get to the end, you'll have a red and a white left over at the end, your two end pieces, and you'll have a red and a white at the beginning that you had twisted together. Okay, the only thing that's important here is that you keep the beginning and the end separate. Okay, take the beginning, untwist the wires, and take, say, the white wire, and set it off to the side. That's going to be one of your open-end wires that's not twisted. Take the red wire on the beginning, and go over to the two wires you have at the end, and you've got a red and a white. So if you've got a red here on the beginning, you'll hook it to the white on the end. Twist those two together. Then you'll have a white and a red that are free. Three wires. Red and white twisted together and a red and a white that are free. Just make sure, and it won't work if you if you do this, just make sure that your red and white aren't the red and white from the beginning or the red and white from the end. You want one from each. One from the beginning, one from the end, two different colors, and you're in. Okay. Uh, that having been said, you can see that's pretty simple. 10 to 17 wraps, that's not very critical. And 26, 27, 28, 24, 23, 22 gauge, anything like that. And if you're going to do the really small ones, you can go with even a much finer wire. Uh, doesn't seem to be critical. Okay, now let's go to the board. Okay, on your board you have two holes here without any solder pad. Your wires go from the top side where the graphics are go down through and then they turn and come turn 90 degree or 180 degrees and plug into the two solder pads right here. I use two different wires. I used a white and a black. I mean a red and a black. I use red for positive. The red one, the positive one is going to go right here on where this track goes over to this big hole. That's positive. And the black is going to go to this one that goes over and hooks to your emitter on your transistor. Okay, let's turn this over. Okay, so you've got your two wires, your red and your black soldered in, and your red goes to this one that goes over to the big hole. Okay, your coil with the two wires twisted together goes in the big hole. Those two wires go down through and solder right in. Okay, the other two wires, the two free ones, you'll see that there's two holes here, right, right on the beginning, one of them has a track that goes over to the resistor, R1, and one goes over and goes to 
uh, the collector side of the transistor. Okay, those two wires go in those two holes, one going over the collector side of the transistor, one going to R1. Doesn't matter which way they go, they're interchangeable as long as you've got one in each one. Okay, so that takes care of the coil. Now you've got a little circle here, R1, that takes a 1K quarter watt resistor. You can put it in either way, resistors are ambidextrous. You can put it either way, as long as you've got both ends of it soldered in here. Okay, and you'll see that R1 has a track that goes over to the base on your transistor. Okay, the transistor is a PNP. Uh, the real popular one is 2N. Uh, 3904. It's a really cheap 4 cent transistor. I use the 2N2222A. Just about anything for PNP transistors. Transistor will work. Okay. And that transistor goes in with the base in the center. The collector up here on the positive side and the emitter down here on the negative side. You'll see on the emitter side the track goes down and goes over to negative and you'll see that the cathode, the flat side of your LED, also goes over to the emitter. Uh, the anode side of your LED goes over to the collector side of your transistor which goes up and goes to uh, the positive side of your coil. Okay, that's basically all there is to it. If you put your transistor in with a flat side, I mean your LED with a flat side down here, as in on the graphics, and put your emitter on the same side, then the resistor is ambidextrous, and the other two holes for your coil, and the third hole back here, it's you can see. And you can go on the internet and Google Jewel Thief, and there's like 7,000 pictures of, this, of the schematic for this. It's... It, pretty simple. The only thing that you will probably ever do to mess one up is if you don't wind this coil correct. You can wind the coil loose, tight, wrap it over itself, anything. But you got to have the only trick to the whole thing is these two wires you twist together have to be from opposite ends of these coils. And I just explained to, to you how to do that. That's, that's dumb simple. And that's basically all there is to it. When you get done, uh, to check to make sure it works, I've got a breadboard set up here, uh, and I've got I'm supplying it with a uh, 1.2 volt rechargeable battery. I've got a, the circuit all laid out here on the breadboard, uh, and you can see it lights. Take your two wires from your uh, board that you just wired up, and observing the polarity, plug it into a Oh, 1 volt, you know, 1 volt, 1.2 volt, whatever, and it should light up. If it doesn't, uh, you did something wrong. Well, if you're going to troubleshoot this, pretty easy to go back. Cathode, anode on the LED, that's written right on the board. You can't miss that. If you've got the, if you have identified the emitter on your transistor and got the emitter on the negative side, uh, the base and the collector fall right into place. Your, your resistor, you can't put in wrong. Uh... And your coil, we've gone over it. And it's more than likely if it doesn't light, uh, you've wired your coil incorrectly. And about the only thing you can do with that is not get two separate ends on the two you twist together and not have opposing coils. See, this coil, the way this is wound, uh, this coil and this coil are wound in different directions on the toroid. So then you power them up and start building up the magnetic field they can oppose each other and eventually shut each other off. Uh, so that's that's basically all there is. Even better, uh, just go to YouTube and uh, type in uh, Jewel Thief. And there's a lot of tutorials there. If you par around through them, like Make Magazine has a tutorial on it. And they do a really, really good job of explaining it all out with a lot of pictures and stuff. Much better than I did. So uh, there's, and there's, if you want the schematic, I just typed in Jewel Thief Circuit on Google and I got 7,000 uh, entries. So, and you know, it's, it's a real easy circuit and there's all kinds of information. This thing is crazy popular. Okay, now uh, what else I was working on was <clears throat> my parabolic ear. 
I received a reflector yesterday and uh, I built the adapter today to capture the rod and for a mounting point for a handle on the back. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rod in it, which I have right here. Just a moment. I'm going to put the rod in and put a piece of paper on it and to go out on a sunny day while it's still shiny and put the piece of paper on, move it up and down until I get the smallest possible uh, dot from the sun on it, which will tell me the exact focus point for it. And that's why I'll mount my microphone. But before I mount my microphone, I've got to paint this whole thing flat black so that if I do point it at the sun, it doesn't cook the microphone. <laughs> Something else that's kind of cool about this is ho we ho Cool, huh? That's just an added bonus, you know. <laughs> so, I'm Tinny from Mini Bull Design. Get out and hike, take a friend, enjoy the great outdoors, and more important than anything, try to have a really great day, and try to take some time out to have some fun today. Bye-bye.